Hi everyone, it's Tracy, and in this tutorial, we're going to create this retro style illustration and manually extrude our text using Affinity Designer's Power Duplicate and Geometric functions. I provided the color palette I'm using as well as the textures, all of which come from texturelabs.org, an amazing site where you can find textures for both personal and commercial use. I'm going to be using a retro script font from Creative Fabrica, but you can use any font that you'd like. I've linked everything in the description below. So let's get started. I've created a square canvas, 3000 pixels at 72 DPI. I'm not planning on printing this. However, if you are, you're going to want to make sure you set your DPI to at least 300 because we'll be using textures and you want to avoid pixelation. I've already dragged out a rectangle for my background and I've changed it to the light pink color from the palette. I've also locked it into place so that I don't accidentally move it around as I'm adding my text and other background elements. I'll select my artistic text tool and I'm going to type out retro. You can type out any word you'd like and again, use any font you'd like. I have this retro script font that I mentioned previously. Now we're not going to be using live editable text. We're going to be converting this to a curve and combining the individual letters into one large shape. The reason for that is I'll be adding a stroke around the top most layer. And if I don't combine this into one single curve, anywhere that my letters overlap, for example, the E here or the tail of the T, the stroke is going to continue around that instead of being one continuous stroke around the edge. So because we're not going to be using live editable text, what I would recommend is getting your text looking the way you want it to, and then make a copy of that, which you turn off and just leave in the background. That becomes a backup that you have a starting point in case you need to start over again. So I'll just drag this out a little bit. And I think that looks good. I'll go ahead and duplicate it with Command J. And again, I'm going to turn off this copy and I'll drag it beneath my rectangle. Again, I shouldn't need it, but if I do, it's there as a backup. Next, I'm going to take this layer and convert it to a curve. So with it selected, I'll go up to the top and click Convert to Curves. That's going to create a group that has each individual letter set as its own curve layer. Now, again, I need this to be all one shape because again, you can see where those letters overlap the next one. So I'll select all five layers, go up to the geometric functions and choose add. And now when I add a stroke around this, it's only going to be on the outside. I don't need this group layer anymore, so I'll drag the curve out of it and just delete it. And I'm all set to begin creating my extrusions. Now, because Designer doesn't have its own extrude tool, we're going to manually create one by duplicating our layers using Power Duplicate and an offset to create the extrusion and then combining all of the duplicates using the add function. I'll start by changing this layer to off white. That's going to be my topmost color. And I'm going to duplicate that with a command J and change that to red. Now I'm keeping this on top so you can see what I'm doing. At this point, I need to create the offset and I need to start very small. The reason that I need to do that is because if I offset too much, once I start to create the power duplicates, anywhere that you have curves like this one, you're going to see very distinct bumps. Now it's next to impossible to get it perfect, but just start small. So I have snapping off for this because that makes it a lot easier. I'll just move this down slightly and then to the right slightly. You'll see a very faint line and that's perfect. So at this point, Designer has recorded how much I went down and how much I went to the right and it's going to duplicate that each time I hit Command J. The depth of my extrusion is going to depend on how many times I duplicate this shape. And I think that looks good. If I go to my layers, you can see I have a lot of layers here. And again, that's because I started so small with my offset. I'm going to select all of these. So I'll shift click on the last one and then combine all of them with an add. Now I can drag this beneath that first layer and that's my first extrusion. So at this point, I don't need to use the power duplicate function anymore. All I need to do is duplicate this shape, change the color, and then offset it. So I'll Command J, 
select the bottom layer, change it to the next color, and I'm going to drag down holding shift until it pulls out to where I want it to. And I'll keep doing that with each color until I get to this dark blue color. My extrusion is done. I'm just going to zoom in close and head to the right side here. What I'm going to check for is just to make sure that I kept these in line because if this is in line, then everything else should be as well. I held shift down as I was dragging out so it kept it in line with the last shape. If you need to fix it, all you need to do is to select each individual layer and just adjust. I'm going to select all of my layers for the text and group them together. When we add texture, I'm going to make a duplicate of this shape and use it as a vector clipping mask to clip the texture inside of it. But for now, I'm going to keep this as is and just keep it grouped. I'm also going to add the stroke to the top layer. So I've selected that off-white layer. I'll go to my swatches and I'm going to choose the same red as that second layer. So I'll just drag the stroke up and I think that looks good. Keep it right about there. And you can see since we created one large shape, there's no overlap. All right, we're done with our text for now. I'm going to turn this off so that we can add the background. I'll turn snapping back on because that's going to help us add the starburst in the direct middle of the canvas. I'll select the cog tool. And if I hover over the middle, you can see that I'll get this green and red line where the exact middle of the canvas is. Now, before I create that though, I want to turn off my stroke and change the fill to this darker pink color. So I'll just find my middle, hold command and shift down, and that's going to allow me to create a perfect shape from the center. So let me size down a little bit. I brought this outside the canvas because I want the starbursts to sit outside. Now I have a shape here, and with certain shapes, you get these nodes and you can make further adjustments to them in the direction that the line shows you. So I'm going to drag this in. I'll drag this top one in. And you can see I'm starting to get my starburst there. And then I'll drag this top one out slightly. All right, I think that looks good. I'm gonna take this layer and clip it inside my rectangle so nothing is hanging outside of the canvas. Let me zoom back in and turn the text on. At this point, I'm ready to start adding some dimension and texture. I'm going to start by tilting my text about 15 degrees to the left. So if I hold a shift down, it'll automatically go to 15 degrees. And then I can just make sure it's centered now that I've done that. I'm also going to add a shadow under this, but before I do that, I want to create my duplicate for the vector clipping mask because I don't need a drop shadow for that one. And this way I don't have to remove it later. So I'll Command J to duplicate that. Go back to my original layer, go down to the FX Studio, and I'm going to add an outer shadow. So I'll use the offset tool to do this. Just bring it out pretty deep there. And I'm gonna bring the radius up pretty high. I want this to be set out from the background pretty far. So that's it for the effects. Let's move on to the texture. I'm going to be adding paper texture to the background and the letters, as well as a grungy half tone texture to the starburst. Let's start with the background elements. I'll select the rectangle and I'm going to go to place image and select one of my paper textures. So I'll click on this one. I'll click to place it. I'm going to deselect it and then reselect it. That's going to place it in the size that it was created in so I can size up and down without worrying about pixelation. And I wanna get it right where I like the texture because what I'm going to do is rasterize and trim this by right clicking and clicking rasterize and trim. That's going to trim away any texture that's outside the bound of the canvas because it's unnecessary and all it does is add to the size of your file. So I'll clip this into place inside the rectangle and I'm going to change the blend mode to overlay. And I want to drop it beneath the cog shape because that's going to get its own texture. Just make sure you stay within the group there. 
All right, so I'll select my cog shape and I'm going to go up to the top here and choose insert inside the selection. That's going to automatically insert the texture inside that shape. I'll go back to the place image and I'm going to grab my other paper texture. I'll click to add it and then size it up. Now this texture has a touch of color to it. It's not pure black and white and I'm actually okay with that here, but if you're not, you can always add an adjustment directly to the texture, such as a black and white adjustment or an HSL, whatever you need to. I'm going to rasterize and trim this, and then I'll change the blend mode to overlay. Now, because it had slight color to it, it does perform a little bit of a color shift, which I actually think works really well here. So again, I'm not going to worry about it. Finally, I'm going to add the halftone texture to this. So. I don't need to select this at the top because I'm already in this layer. I'll just go to place image and I'm going to choose this top one here. I'll click to place it and then size it up. And I want a good portion of the half tones to be across the entire canvas. Now this is a black and white texture and I don't want the white in this case because it's going to perform too much of a color shift. The easiest way to get rid of this is to use blend options. And that's by going up to the cog here at the top of the layer panel. And I'm not going to go into great detail about how blend ranges or blend options work, but I am going to link a full tutorial that I created on them and how to use them with texture at the top of this video. For this tutorial, I'm just going to go right to this node, drag it down and to the left so that I'm left with just the black dots. Now I just need to change my blend mode to something like soft light. And I'm also going to duplicate this and use one of the flip functions because I want to add a little at the top. Now, just like I did with the other, I want to select both of these and rasterize and trim to bring it inside the balance of the canvas. And my background is done. Now that we have the background shape done, let's focus on completing the text. So I'm going to use this top duplicate as a vector clipping mask. So I'll pull in some texture. Again, I'll use a place image and I'm going to use that same slightly colored paper that I used before. So I'll place it and then size up. And I just need this to be over the text. So I actually don't need to go outside of the canvas. Therefore, I don't need to rasterize and trim. I'll select that duplicate and I'm going to drag it up and over the icon for the texture layer. So you'll see it light up in blue and when you release, the texture is going to be inside the bounds of that group. Now I can change the blend mode. I'll change it to something like overlay. And I'm gonna zoom in and you can see the paper texture is covering the entire thing. Now you could certainly add this to each and every layer and add a different texture to each one but I actually think this looks fine. I'm going to leave this as is and call that done. But one final texture I want to add is to go into my original group, select this curve. And again, I'm going to choose insert inside selection. And I want to use the other halftone texture that I have for inside of this. So I'll click to place it and I'm going to size it up pretty large because I want the halftone texture to show pretty well. And again, this is black and white. So I need to go to my blend options, drag this slider down and to the right, and that's going to get rid of all the white and leave me with the black. And then I can change my blend mode. In this case, I'm going to use color burn. And I'll right click and rasterize and trim. So that's it. We've created our own extrusion effect using power duplicate and the geometric functions. So let me know in the comments below, can you see yourself using this effect either on typography or maybe something like dimensional icons or other shapes? If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. And if you like this video, you might consider watching one of these next. Thanks for watching.